A new way to restore corals. Researchers have found a new way to cheaply and efficiently restore dying corals using a method similar to how farmers scatter seedlings onto a field. With the world's corals deteriorating at an alarming rate and restoration often slow and laborious, a team of scientists has come up with a better approach to sowing corals. The new method involves harvesting coral larvae and planting them on tetrapod-shaped cement substrates. In a few weeks, the larvae will turn into coral polyps, which can be sewn onto the reef. The seeding units don't require manual attachment and only need to be wedged into the reef's crevices. One day, they can be sewn from boats or by underwater drone. Twelve months after the sewing, the scientists found at least one coral growing on half the units. They believe the technique can sow 10,000 corals in just 50 working hours, compared to the hundreds or even thousands of hours needed for common restoration methods. The team is currently working to refine each step of their novel sewing approach. Time to save our oceans. Seabin device designed to keep the ocean clean. Australian surfers Andrew Turton and Pete Kaglinski, who are also best friends, decided to do something after they became frustrated with the amount of trash that was floating in the ocean waters that they spent much of their childhood playing in. The duo quit their jobs and invented the sea bin, which is what they hope will be a sustainable way to reduce the amount of garbage that is polluting the world's waters. Built from recycled materials, the sea bin is fixed to a dock with a water pump that runs on shore power. The pump brings water through the sea bin, which allows the natural fiber back inside the device to catch the floating rubbish and debris before water is pumped back out. Users have the option of installing an oil and water separator to the pump to clean the water that flows through it before the water is allowed to flow back into the ocean. The sea bin is lined with a natural fiber catch bag that collects floating debris. When the bag is full, it can be changed with another clean one, and the collected debris can be disposed of responsibly. Turton and Kaglinski are trying to raise enough capital to turn the sea bin prototype into a reality. According to Australia's ABC News, crowdfunding has helped the two men raise 50,000 US dollars for commercial production, and a video of the sea bin in action has attracted more than 10 million hits online. Researchers find plastic breaking fungus. New research coming out of China may hold the key to dealing with the world's massive plastic waste problem. Plastic is not easily biodegradable and can take thousands of years to decompose. A group of researchers found Aspergillus tubingensis, a common soil fungus, at a dump in Pakistan. Under laboratory conditions, it was shown to break down plastic in weeks, not years. Aspergillus tubingensis has previously been found in patients with lung conditions, such as cystic fibrosis. The fungus used its roots to break apart the plastic, but its effectiveness was found to be influenced by other factors, such as temperature and pH levels. Researchers say that tweaking these could pave the way for fungi to be used in waste treatment plants or in soils impacted by plastic. There might be a solution to the giant garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean. A Dutch group aiming to rid the oceans of plastic junk has announced it will begin efforts to clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch by 2018, two years earlier than originally intended. The organization Ocean Cleanup will use trash collectors in the form of curved booms and screens, which are suspended by anchors floating in deep water. The system will act like an artificial coastline, catching plastic debris as it drifts on the surface or just below the water. Once full, a vessel empties the system and transports the collected plastic to land for processing and recycling. The group plans to deploy up to 50 systems and expects to collect 50% of the trash in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in just five years. Ocean Cleanup's first pilot parts are now in production and will begin testing off the west coast of the U.S. by year's end. This robot water snake hunts pollution on autopilot. Meet Lake Geneva's newest swimmer, the EnviroBot, an autonomous pollution hunter. Gulp. The EnviroBot is four feet long and comprises several special purpose modules that constitute its eel-like design. The purpose of these modules are twofold. First, each has a small electric motor that lets the robot swim like a water snake. Secondly, each segment has a unique sensor for gathering a variety of data. For example, biological sensors contain tiny organisms or bacteria that react to the presence of pollutive toxins. Meanwhile, electrical sensors can track water temperature and chemical sensors test water acidity. More modules can be added as needed. 
The robot can swim on a route or make its own way through a body of water to find the source of pollution. And while it's very cool, we're not exactly sure we'd want it swimming beside us.